Good morning, everyone. It is Stephen and Andrea from Pin in the Atlas. Today, we are in eastern Idaho. Look at this beautiful landscape. It is just absolutely gorgeous this morning. Weather is perfect. And we're here to explore the ghost town of Leesburg. Now Leesburg's totally different to the normal ghost mining towns that we've explored before because there's no actual mines here. They used to pan for their gold and it started back in 1866. Now there are a few buildings. I've got a map of what the buildings are so let's see if we can figure it out together. Let's take a look. So this first building was built in 1890 and they believe it's been moved because it's got Chinese writing apparently inside. Unfortunately, it's a little bit dilapidated. Yeah, it'd be tough to, uh, to get in there or see where any of the writing was. So they think that this was originally a Chinaman's uh, establishment or home and because the Chinese didn't live right in town, uh, they believe that this one must have been moved to this area. Here's the next cabin in line. You can see a few more down there. This next cabin, as far as I can tell, was the tax uh, assessor's office. And this one was built in around 1890. So the tax man's house, I guess he wasn't very popular. <laughs> Just a single room cabin. Yeah, still got a few shelves back there on the side. Now at one point, Leesburg had, well the Lees, this basin actually had about 7,000 people. But in this town, there was over 3,000 people, over a hundred businesses. And the miners who panned for their gold, uh, they lived in cabins in the woods. So if the map is correct and we are correct, this should be the schoolhouse. Yeah, now this was actually built in 1935 and it used to have 20 children annually. Now what's strange is all the gold had been, most of the miners had moved away by that time, but the town of Leesburg carried on. Okay. And I believe also this was used for Sunday school too. Multi-purpose building? Yeah. See, they've got two uh, plug sockets in the wall there. Well, 1935, they would have had electricity. Those look like they're plastic. Well, people remained living here well into uh, the 1950s. Wow. What's in the back room, or is the floorboards too? Uh, maybe we'll walk around. Well, actually, this seems pretty solid. So there's a picture on the board of all the children sitting outside this, which makes me think that this definitely was the schoolhouse. Very small. Can you imagine 20 kids in here? Jeez. And that looks like a little coat closet back there and this bench along the window here, a little seat or something. Yeah, like I said, this was still used up until the 50s. They could have added a few things in here because you would imagine this would have just been a, a one room for the school. and Originally, yeah. Yeah, and if they held church services or whatever in here, that that's they if, wouldn't divide it up. That's if we're correct by looking at the map. It's very difficult because they do say that there's a lot of buildings are still standing, but in actual fact, they're not. They've already collapsed. Mm -hmm. Now this next building is an L shape. Now this one definitely was the second post office and this was built in 1937 and I believe the people actually lived here as well. So we've come along the side of the L building, the uh, old post office where there is a doorway. And also one thing that's, that's really cool is like Lincoln Logs. Just reminds me of Lincoln Logs when I was a kid. You build your own log cabin and that's just you know, very sturdy construction. And then here you got some 
I'm sure maybe the, the park service has come in and put some cement, more modern, to keep it standing. So by looking at this, what I, because there's a bed in the corner and that is attached to the wall. So what I would imagine would be, this would be the residential part of the post office and the actual post office proper would be next door and we couldn't access that from the, the front door, it was jammed. And see here is another electrical outlet and yeah, that's, that is plastic. So just trying to figure it out really. So I would guess that this would be the post office part of the building because then that would be the front door because the door we entered would have been the side door. Mm, that's very short door. Mm. Even you have to duck to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> now this whole town is actually being put on the uh, National Historic Sites list. Oh wow, look at the newspapers. I love this old newspaper. Let's see if we can find a date. So these are really cool. I love the old adverts and old charter. Oh, is that a date? There are some dates on here. Uh, you can see at the top or to the right. Is that July? Is, can you see a year? Is that June 26. I think June? the year's just out of frame. Found the date, July 9th, 1952. On that particular paper. And there's July 4th, holiday needs. That's just, I could sit and look at these all day. Now this, again, that kind of doesn't make sense because if that's 1952, the town was pretty much gone by then. You know, it had already become a ghost town. So that seems to be really strange. And there's another bed in the back here. And again, that's still attached to the wall. Not much left of the butchers. Now this was built in 1902 and then uh, it became the freight depot. Hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing too, we always kind of wonder. See, that, that one looks like it's got different building techniques, but you kind of wonder why this building is in shambles, but the one next to it is so well preserved. Well, the other one was built in 1937, and this one was built in 1902. Yeah. And now this next collapsed structure that there's absolutely nothing left, by all accounts, is the Chinese laundry. But I've just noticed, look at the ground. You've got uh, indentations here. So I'm wondering whether or not there was another building here. I'm sure there was. I mean, this was, you well, know, said it had like a hundred businesses, businesses here. Yeah. So, but yeah, you can kind of tell this has got, almost looks like a little moat. Or maybe it was, down. maybe it was for snow runoff because the winters are really harsh. I mean, they get what, six, eight, ten foot of snow? Oh yeah, I mean, we're, that's what they had in Gilmore and we're higher up in the mountains now, further up north. So I would imagine that, uh, They've seen quite a bit of snowfall up here as well. So this was the Chinese laundry, built in 1890. Turn the page of my notes. And this next building was the stagecoach office. And next door was the stables. Oh, wow. So that had a very large opening. Well, here. this, the stagecoach office was actually built in 1910, but the stable next door, which then became a saloon, was originally built in 1870, or in the 1870s. Mm. From a stable to a saloon. From a stable to a saloon. <laughs> I hope they cleaned it up. 
And last but not least on this side is the Chinese mercantile. And this one was built in the 1880s. And then again, it's got the, uh, the Lincoln Log style log cabin look. And very small inside. Just one room. Two doors. Still has some canvas on the wall there. And you've also got where the stovepipe used to be. And we do believe from this marker onward is where the cemetery lies. Now apparently there's 17 known graves, although can't really make out any of them. And I would have thought there would have been more than 17 people buried here, considering the length of time the, the town was in operation. Right. And the Chinese people that were buried, their bodies have since been exhumed and taken back to China. Oh, wow. Now, two things strike me as odd with this cemetery. One is it's very close to town, and normally the cemeteries are about half a mile or a mile away. And the other thing is, there's a stream running. So if that stream floods, it could easily wash over the bodies. So as you can see, we are standing right in the middle of Main Street. And it does still continue off that way. They have since uh, fenced this whole area off because uh, like Andrea mentioned, it is now uh, on the register of historic places. So from what I can gather, again, just guessing, this is the log barn and hayloft, and this was built prior to 1908. It's in better days. Then this little roof structure, you can see it's completely collapsed. We believe that these were the horse stalls. And again, you know, these date back to the uh, 1800s, late 1800s. And then now, next, next door, door this, is, this is the chicken coop. This is a chicken coop? This was the chicken coop. Does it look like a chicken coop? Oh, it's got a little barn door. Yeah, that would make sense. Right next to the chicken coop, the very large building. So this was at one point the butchers? Yeah, and it was built prior to 1890. And then after the butchers moved, this became a workshop. Ah. And over the back here, no trip would be complete without a trip to the Dunny. And this is one of the oldest structures actually, and it was built in 1890. Let's take a look. Tiny. It is. Now I wonder if this was a double originally, looking and somebody's just sort of patched, patched it up to keep it. Yeah, keep it in place. Yeah. Even so though, it's tiny. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure whether or not this was the boarding house or the hotel. It seems strange that you would have a boarding house and a hotel right next door to each other. Yeah. But they were prior, well, the boarding house was built prior 1880, so I'm wondering whether or not it's the heap of wood next door. But the post office was built, the hotel and post office was built in 1900, and it used to have a covered walkway across Main Street to the other side, uh, to the other side of the street. Oh wow, that would have been cool to see. It's kind of uh, like the Hotel Green we did the blog on where it had that Hotel uh, Green little, in, yep. little tramway that's sprawled across the street. Hotel Green in Pasadena. Yeah. Now the other thing, because the winters were so harsh, they had a really tight community and they all helped each other. And during the winter months, they had loads and loads of dances, dinners and the whole town would come together and spend time in this hotel. Oh, that must have been lovely. You love that kind of small town camaraderie. Yeah, they used to help each other. So, you know, like during the winter months was also when they would like do their buildings and stuff, but they would all come together and help each other. Whatever they needed, they would join together. But... Well, that's how things should be. 
and give one last look of Leesburg. And it's kind of one of those places, it's, it's neat to be, it's way out here also. It's neat to be here, but it's also one of those places that you can tell doesn't see a lot of traffic. And uh, like we mentioned before, the information sign is uh, really outdated. So that's why it's hard for us to kind of determine which structure is which one because so many of them now are collapsed. But an important part of mining history and Idaho history and maybe we can learn a lot from the people that lived here and how they joined together as a community to help each other. Exactly. And on that note, get out there. Go and explore. Put another pin in the atlas. And we will see you on our next adventure. Bye. Bye.